Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Um, today's video is actually going to be a follow-up to my last metrology video. Um, we're just posting these a few days apart just so we don't bore you. But I wanted to talk about coefficient of thermal expansion. I'm not going to give you numbers because I always forget them. I get performance anxiety. Oh well. But one thing to understand with parts is when you inspect hot off the machine, you're going to be oversized. Uh, Parts heat up, so unless you've got really good flood coolant, your part is going to be hot when it comes off the machine. And we're going to set this distraction aside. That's a micrometer carriage stop, that's something we're working on. Um, turns out aluminum slides on cast iron really nicely. Now, back to what we're talking about. So this gauge block, I'm letting it stabilize here, I held onto it with my hand. We're going to measure it with this micrometer. Um, well, this is actually technically a micrometer calibration standard. It's not a gauge block. Um, these are lapped, I believe, to within one micron, give or take. Um, uh, the theory is this should be 10 times more precise than the instrument it's used to calibrate. This is only accurate to within one ten thousandths of an inch. So this needs to be an order of magnitude more precise. Um, that's the theory. Now, I really like these because these have more thermal mass than the rod type um standards i have actually a lot of trouble with those getting them situated and when i calibrate with them i kind of just assume we're a few tenths long um, by the time i do it and you can just leave them in place and recalibrate uh yeah it, calibration's an art um it's still something i'm learning and working on so what i actually wanted to do is this is at 64 63 degrees right now um so is the micrometer so because these are both steel, they have the same coefficient of thermal expansion. I'm gonna hold this in my hand and talk your ear off for a couple of minutes to warm it up. And then we're gonna measure again. And it should be about a half a thousandths um, or two or three ten thousandths of an inch larger. So right here, um, we can see on the line on the vernier scale, we're reading one ten thousandths of an inch off. Which is actually not really that big a deal um, for my accuracy standards, and we're pretty repeatable on this. Now, does that mean we need to recalibrate? No, because all that means is I am going to wipe the anvils off and try again. And guess what, guys? We're reading a tiny, tiny, tiny bit smaller. So I just did this again, and we're dead on zero. So what we just demonstrated here is a limit of repeatability to a measuring instrument. Now, I treat my micrometers at best as plus or minus two ten thousandths of an inch instruments. That's the best I can get these to repeat to. Um, on the average of five tries. Why five? Because math. Uh, three tries is often not enough to establish a really good mathematical pattern. It's good enough to start an average. There's a bunch of statistics behind it that I don't fully understand, but people who are much better at math than I am told me five tries if you want maximum precision. Three tries is infinitely better than one and better than two. Two is better than one. So if you're going for maximum precision, more tries, but again, limited. So we need statistical significance, but we'll finish that talk. I'm going to warm this up in my hands and it's going to grow. How much is it going to grow? Well, we're going to warm it up about 20 to 30 degrees um, because your skin temperature isn't 98 degrees. I want to say your hands are probably like 94, 95. Um, I have them in my pocket now and I'm making sure I keep the blood flowing. So we warm her up and we're going to talk about kind of statistical significance and resolution. Uh, micrometers aren't perfect. Now what Sterrett says with a brand new micrometer, their made in USA ones are guaranteed when they're new to be plus or minus one ten thousandths of an inch. 
Now, I agree with them. The instrument is capable of that. Is it capable of that in my hands? No. I have used new Starrett micrometers, and frankly, I'm no more accurate with them than I am with my used eBay specials. And I don't really feel like chasing down that last tenth. If I need that last tenth, we're going to demonstrate techniques on a surface plate in a follow-up video to this. Um, we're going to give my calibration standard one more minute in my pocket, and then we're going to remeasure it. And I'm expecting it to be about two or three ten thousandths larger than when we last measured it. But the thing is, we need to make sure it's thoroughly heat soaked. Um, because what can happen is it can temperature stabilize while we're trying to measure it. Um, and we also want an even heat across the whole calibration standard. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't want to bore you all too much with stuff. Um, I'm feeling it close enough heat soaked now. And we don't really need to be that much bigger to prove a point but i think you can even see on camera we're stopping very in a very different place so right now on the vernier we're reading uh one inch three ten thousandths now the problem with this is because of the temperature in the shop this is going to cool rapidly um again we're reading three ten one inch three ten thousandths um you can sort of approximate about half a thousandth of an inch pretty easily with no vernier. You know, plus half, minus a half. So even with a something without a uh, separate scale, I will show you what that looks like. Uh, it's a Share Tomiko micrometer, but almost all, at least all the ones I have read the same, where you have your ten thousandths of an inch scale here. And it's hard to show that on camera uh, and still have the part in a good location. Hopefully, it, at least if you're not viewing this on a smartphone, you can, you can see that um, being split on the barrel. Uh, I do have, and I, I use this one fairly regularly. This is an older micrometer, a 436 that doesn't have the vernier. Um, you don't need the vernier, really, uh, at least for like normal everyday shop work like you're in my kind of shop so you know this is just fun it, it's really i think good to demonstrate these type of um lessons to people because it's not something you might necessarily think of mattering and the larger your parts actually the more heat matters what i've learned is when you get to uh you know like two three four inch shafts on a lathe you really need to pay attention to your heat. What I actually had started doing um, and still do this is I'll walk away from my finish pass, walk away, leave it for an hour, let it temperature stabilize and remeasure it because I could not figure out for the life of me why I kept had, having oversized parts I was measuring on the machines. And I had failed to take into account temp thermal expansion. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope this was interesting and educational. Um, if you really do enjoy this style of content and don't find me terribly pedantic, you know, please subscribe. Uh, and really just like, thanks for letting me share this with you guys.